What's up, Fantasy Managers? This is Jason, the Lucky Bastard Youth and Walt. And for those 29 subscribers, this is the Fantasy Footballing Show. Uh, this is the play or pause edition for Thursday night, tomorrow, Falcons at Panthers. I'll be doing the Falcons, he'll be doing the Panthers. And you listen to us when you have a little tough decision of, should I start somebody? Should I sit somebody? You know what? I'll go check out Jason. I'll go check out Tyler and let them decide for us. And that's what we do. We do this for you guys. We're doing it for you. Remember, if we're wrong, just put the blame on us. Tell all your friends it was our fault. And then be like, you know what? Go check them out so you can listen. And then maybe they'll like, ah, mind games. I like where I'm going there. Um, so before we get into that, also, please like this video. Please subscribe. We need 21 more subscribers to get to 50 so we can start doing some live action here or figure out how to do it. And uh, leave a comment. We like to interact, especially Tyler. He's great at it. A big boss man. And all right, so let's just get right into it, right? So I'm doing the Falcons. They're going against Carolina. They played two weeks ago in a crazy game, one of the best games all season. It was 34-37, went into overtime, Atlanta won, and Atlanta had a total of uh, 406 total yards in that game. So keep that in mind. They're playing them again just two weeks later. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off with Marcus Mariota. This one's a little tough. I think there's better options out there. I used to have Mariota earlier uh, this week. Um, if I had him on my team, I would have play him play him but that's just because of the other options out there there's not a lot of great quarterbacks that i'm like guaranteed to play in i've been struggling at the quarterback position i feel like if you are struggling at the quarterback position you have Mariota on your waivers and you need to pick up somebody for this week i think he's a reliable option just because like last time they played like i said like two weeks ago he threw the ball 28 times he averaged nine yards uh, throw. He had 253 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Plus, he had five carries for 24 yards, and he was only sacked twice. He ended up getting over, I believe, 20 points in our league. Um, he is the 13th position co uh, quarterback in fantasy football, and the Panthers, are their defense, are 18th in quarterback scoring. So, I, I kind of like the odds, especially for still going off a game that was like two weeks ago. You know, I there's not really a lot of change that's happened in the last however so long ago, like 10 days or whatnot. I think if you look for somebody because some, your guy's on buy or you just need a better option, I think Mariota might be able to help in that department. Um, next, guess who's back? Cordell Patterson. Um, I would play him. I think he would be a good flex, possibly get you running back two numbers. Um, he came back from injury, so he didn't play two weeks ago. Uh, last week, he played against the Chargers. He was kind of on a pitch count. He got two touchdowns, two goal line touchdowns. He still rushed the ball about 13 times. He had 44 yards. He only had one reception, right? One reception for nine yards on one target. Um, I think those numbers are going to go up. I think they're still going to probably watch him because he's been very injury prone uh, these last couple of years. But I think his his attempts are going to go higher. His receptions are going to go higher, especially if this game turns into a shootout. But the important thing is he got the goal line carries. He got the goal line carries last week and he scored on two of them. I think he's a, he's a good play for this matchup against Carolina, who's 30th. Their defense is 30th and running back scoring, so I like that. Play him. Speaking of that, speaking of the defense being 30th against running back scoring, um, I think there's a chance and you play Tyler Algier. Uh, last time he played against him, he had his best game. He had um, 14 rushes, I want to say for 39 yards, but he also had three receptions for 46 yards and a touchdown. That was his best game. I think he scored like 14 points or something like that. Um, with Cordell Patterson, you know, maybe just like creeping up and a little bit more um, touches. 
And I think you, there's still going to be a guy that's going to get you down to the goal line, right? They're, they're still going to use two running backs. Defense is horrible. I still think they're going to use Tyler Algier. I think he's going to do – he's starting to come on a little bit. He had 99 uh, yards last week against – the Chargers, I think he's going to be one of those players that he'll get you there. He'll get you down there. Maybe hoping that he'll uh, still a goal line carry. But at least if he's getting the yards and the receptions to get down there, I think he could definitely put up flex numbers, um, possibly get over like 10 points. Hopefully, you're hoping that he takes a, a goal line carry from Patterson and uh, end up scoring a touchdown. Um, next, pause on Caleb Huntley. I even had him. I had him last week because I was desperate. So I was watching the game, and he did end up still getting seven rushes. Four of them came on one drive. Cordell Patterson is back, as I've said. Then it goes Tyler Algier and then Huntley. I think now with Patterson taking, going to get more reps, get more touches, I think that's going to go into Huntley's um, opportunity, his values, and it's going to be even less. I think he's going to come in still just for a few spells, you know, to give relief to both uh, Algier and Patterson. But I don't think it's going to be enough, going to be worthy. I actually even saw it last week where that that uh, game, that game, that drive, sorry, ugh, that drive where he uh, had four rushes, he took it all the way down to the goal line. I'm sitting there, I'm like, yes, 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 this is what I want. Went out. Patterson came in, bulldozed his way into the touchdown for his second score. So I think his options are pretty much irrelevant. Irrelevant. I'll put a pause on him. You could probably even drop him. If you had him for some reason because Patterson was out, I think it's time to drop him. I sure did. Um, all right, another player. I'm sad to say this. <clears throat> My homie, Drake, Drake London. From USC. I think you got to put a pause on that guy. I'll tell you why. So, even the game against uh, that blowout game where everyone was scoring points, except Drake London. He had five targets. He had three catches and only 31 yards. In our league, that's only five points. Um, it seems like lately he's not on a good connection with Marcus Mariota. Like, he is getting some targets still, but he's just... They're not able to, able to connect. And then in last week's game, he had the ball down the goal line. He, he was getting it down the goal line. That's what you want to see out of your right receivers. He just got stripped. He got stripped. Like, like he was getting mugged. Like, give me that bread. And he just took and uh, Mac for the <laughs> charger just grabbed it and just ran the other way. Like, he was like, this is my ball. That's my ball now. And he just ran off with it. So... Let me also read some of the points since uh, week three when Atlanta played Seattle, which was a pretty big game for him. Since then, these are his scores, all right? Um, two, five, 5.5, 5, 0.5, and last week, 1.5. And that is a half point PPR, the league that I play in. Um, it, it's just not working right now. He's, uh, they're, they're still trying to figure each other out. Mariota and London. It's not, it's not looking too good. I think he's a safe pause this weekend or t uh, tomorrow night. And I want to start him. Speaking of that, his connection is not doing too good for London, but Mariota's still scoring those points. How'd he do it? Ah. Kyle Pitts, baby. I would play him. This is Right? This is this guy. He's the most frustrating guy out there. He had high hopes. Not doing too well. But I watched the game yesterday, or last week or against the Chargers, and he was getting the targets. I believe he had seven, seven targets. They just weren't con connecting. But it was great to see they were even doing long balls to him. They were doing long balls. He even had a drop. So they are trying to get him more into this game. The last time they played against Carolina, he had a pretty good game. I think it was the best of his uh, of the season. And he had five catches for 80 yards, one touchdown, nine targets. So obviously, I think they're starting to think this guy is a weapon. It's a tight end who could line outside and play as a wide receiver. Um, I think they're really starting to go and try to get him involved. Like I said, he had seven targets last game too. So he had nine targets, seven targets. 
And I think he's going to get a lot of targets uh, this game too, which is, should be uh, just football's going everywhere. Going everywhere. Hopefully. <laughs> um, also, if you want to follow the trend, if you're into uh, conspiracies and stuff like that. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong page. So Kyle Pitts, since week three against Seattle, he had 10 points. But then he had two. Then he had eight. Then he had one. Then he had 16. Last week, three. So what does that mean? He's going to probably put up some numbers this week, right? This is the week he does it. It's every other week. Play him. I hope I'm not eating my tongue after that. I would play him. Um, There's a little segment right here. I want to put like boom or bust. Like there's a player that you could put out there if you really – struggling with uh, injuries or buys and you just you just want to hope that something may happen out of this guy so my boomer buzz is a uh, I I'm thinking I think it's gonna be a boom it's gonna be a boom it's gonna Damier beard bird not beard bird this is a beard bird um I've talked about him before I think he's one of those guys he's gonna get you either zero points or he's gonna get you 12 points, 14 points, something like that. The last time he uh, played against Carolina, he had three receptions, 67 yards, one touchdown. He had six targets. That was the most catches he had all year. That was the most um, targets he had all year. But I think the thing about him is that he's so fast. That touchdown he had against Carolina, it was it was a 40-yard uh, run, I believe. It was something in that region. But he was able just to get the ball, turn around, he outran the Carolina team and scored a touchdown. He didn't get anything last week, but I think there's a chance with how this game is going to be played uh, tomorrow night that he's going to get an opportunity to catch a deep ball or turn something small into something big. I would say that he is a boom. Here comes the boom for Beard. Bird. God dang it. Bird. Bird's the word. Um, pause the Atlanta's defense because they're at the bottom with like, rushing and passing the thing that you can only hope with them is that Carolina's quarterback doesn't play well and they could get like a pick six where you can't really determine pick sixes so and I would also play their kicker why not I feel like play all the kickers on Thursday night this year uh young ho Q. He, he also uh had his highest points or second highest points he scored 14 against Carolina two weeks ago with the game winner so Oh, that's it. Um, if you like this video, please show it and like it. Um, subscribe. We need those subscribers. We're trying to build. We're building something here. We're trying to build a Terminator-esque fantasy football show that everybody loves and enjoys. Um, subscribe. Leave a comment. Be highly appreciated. We love you guys. We love the interaction we're getting. Um, good luck tomorrow. And I think, I believe Tyler is going to have his player pause um, tomorrow before the game starts. All right. See ya.